All right, everybody. So 3D Coat actually lost the uh, information for my selection area when I went to make the plates thicker. So I needed to redraw those real quick. Still exactly the same technique. This time I used a thickness of 4.5. So now I'm going to go and clear that selection so I can work on these plates now. Now one other thing I'm going to do with these real quick is that I'm going to also angle them so it looks like they're sort of one side of them is sunk into the skin of this creature. So it doesn't look like they were just plopped on there as an afterthought. It looks like they actually grew out of it. Still going to use the pose tool for that though. So what I can do is with the pose tool, if I just click once, that'll actually select the entire thing evenly, and then I can move it just as if I was using the transform tool. The reason why I wouldn't just use the transform tool though is because that'll actually transform every single plate all at once. Now I could use the split tool in order to split these up into individual objects, but I'm going to keep them all as one Vox layer for right now. Now once I have these uh, once I have these selected, I can move only the gizmo in order to move the gizmo into an appropriate spot. Angle it properly. Maybe set it up right about there. And then I can sort of twist it. I can even scale it a little bit and then sink it into the body. There we go, just like that. I'll hit apply. And now I just need to do that to the other three. So I'll do that real quick. Great. Okay, so now for the next part, what I talked about last time is I'm now going to use the pose tool. I'm going to grab with the line, just going to draw a little line selection area right here. And again, we're trying to mimic the lobster here. And with this selected, I can then sort of drag it out until it actually pushes past the, uh, the edge of the body so it actually sticks out a little bit. Going to do that a little bit more. Always better to have a little bit too much than too little because we can always cut it away. I'll do that to all of these real quick. Great, and then to make those points we are going to use the cutoff tool with, this time it will be just with the 2D spline. And what I can do is then just draw this kind of a selection area, hit enter, might, there we go. And now we've got those spikes and then we'll, we'll fix this flat, flatness later. Do the same thing to the other shells. Great. Now we will sort of fix how these don't these aren't really these don't really make sharp edges like the uh, the lobster shells do. So we're going to fix that right now. We're going to do that with um, the scrape tool. At least we'll start it with the scrape tool. We might need a combination of tools. We'll see. But for right now, I'm just going to use the scrape tool and just start scraping away at those edges. I'm going to turn off soft scrape up here.
again, it may look very chunky and faceted right now, and that's just because we're at a very low uh, voxel resolution. We will fix that later as we get into higher detail work. Whenever you're modeling, it's a good idea to start simple and then work your way down into more details. Okay, now in order for these uh, these sort of double bladed shells to not look quite so abnormal, I suppose, to make them look a little bit more natural, I'm going to add in a bit of a, a ridge here so it looks like it's actually two shells, one laid under the other. Now to do this, I'm going to go to my build brush, but I'm going to use a sharp square alpha, which does come with the software, thankfully. And I'm just going to... Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good. We are primarily going to be viewing this creature from the top, so I'm not really worrying. So I'm primarily concerned with how it looks from the top. Okay, now I'm going to add the actual uh, sort of the, the fluid sacs that are going to be in here. They're going to be very basic, but I'm going to make a new voxel layer to hold them.